We're hearing from a sage who was inquiring into why we experience things as external. And as part of this process, he's transferred his life force into somebody else. The sage said, when darkness fell, then the person into whose heart I had entered fell into deep sleep. I too enjoyed this deep sleep. Then when the food he had eaten had been digested and when the nadis were clear, the life force began to move vigorously and sleep weakened. The sage continued, when thus sleep had been weakened, I saw the world with its sun, etc., as if it arose in the heart. I saw all this where I was, but this world was being overwhelmed by the flood of cosmic dissolution. Now this person that he transferred his life force into was somebody who was nearby. So therefore it's strange that he should now be experiencing cosmic dissolution. So clearly we're in a different realm here altogether. And it should also be noted that we're hearing about the cosmic dissolution as caused by flood. We had another cosmic dissolution quite recently and that's in the narrator of this story. The story of this sage is being narrated by the fire god who had rescued Basa from the cosmic dissolution which was caused by a massive impact on the earth. We should appreciate what cosmic dissolution means. It means no longer identifying with a certain level of conditioned reality. And that conditioning goes from quite gross levels to quite subtle levels. And I'm going to suggest that this is what's happening here. This sage is gradually moving beyond his conditioning, moving beyond the gross conditioning notions of an external world to perhaps a more subtle conditioning represented by water. That's possibly to do with our beliefs, looking more deeply into our notions. Perhaps that will become clear at some point. Right now then we're in the middle of the cosmic dissolution by water. I saw myself seated with my bride in a house. So he's obviously just got married. The flood was carrying us all away with the whole house, etc., floating as if to try to fight the flood and stay alive. Soon the house in which I was seated, which was being carried down by the flood, broke into pieces. I jumped into the water. I had abandoned the family and friends, being solely interested in the preservation of my life. Sometimes I went down under, and sometimes I rose to the surface. When I obtained a foothold on a rock, and tried to rest a while, a huge wave came and knocked me into the flood again. There was not a single form of suffering that I did not experience during this period, and I was subjected to every type of painful experience. If you think that life as a spiritual practitioner is all about joy and bliss, then it's worth bearing in mind that it isn't necessarily like that. A whole storm of stuff can get churned up the deeper you look into yourself, the deeper you look into the workings of your mind and your moods, the more you have to face up to, the more you have to learn to let go of some very subtle things. In the meantime, because I was in a state of utter despair, though quite conscious, I recollected a previous lifetime experience in a state of samadhi. Then I was an ascetic. I had entered another person, eager to witness the dream state. I knew that I was perceiving an illusion. At the same time, I also perceived the present experience. Though I was being carried away by the flood, I experienced joy. So in the midst of all that suffering, if you can still have the wherewithal, even if driven by desperation, to remember your true nature, then there is hope, or there is joy. While observing the flood and the destruction caused by it, I reflected thus, what cannot fate do? Even the three-eyed god is being crushed by this flood. 
In this flood all the gods and the demons are being whirled around. These mountainous waves rise right up to the seat of Brahma, the creator. These waves look like elephants. They are as powerful as lions and they seem to float in the sky like clouds. Even the protectors of this earth, along with their palaces and vehicles, fall into this flood and get drowned. So you're not even safe if you're a god. The gods and the demons float in this flood together and hold on to one another. Because of the falling cities and the floating palaces, the waters of the flood appear to be solid walls. Even the sun has been overcome by this flood, and the sun is being led into the netherworld. It can't get any worse than this, can it? Only the knowers of the truth, the sages of self-knowledge, experience no sorrow at all. They see their bodies being borne down the stream, but without the false notion, I am that body. Helpless women are drowning in this flood of cosmic dissolution where all are being chewed by death. Who can save whom? The entire universe now seems only to be an infinite ocean. Where are all the gods headed by Indra? So there is nothing to cling on to. No rock. The only people that have got any way out of this are the sages of self-knowledge. If you have your relationship with reality righted, then even in the midst of all this great suffering, you can realize it's not what it seems. And in fact, sometimes this suffering, sometimes this kind of total destruction is necessary in order for us to turn away, in order to realize that there is nothing out there for our attention to find solace in. The attention has to come back and return to its own true nature.